From the soundstage in the digital media classroom here at Wellington High School, welcome to another episode of Dialogue with the Dukes. Today's show is being brought to you by the Wellington Music Store, located at 117, 119 West Herrick in downtown Wellington. We're having a double header of sorts today, or as Ernie Banks used to say, let's play two, although I wonder how many people even know who Ernie Banks is. We're going to be talking baseball and softball today, and with us today for the baseball team on my immediate right, we have C.J. Poland. He was uh, one of the star pitchers, and you played infield, is that correct, last year? Yeah. And Ty Moore. Ty, um, I think at the beginning of the season, they didn't really know how good you were last year, but you came out, I think I looked up, uh, I think you had a 313 batting average. I think the Guardians would love to have uh, a person like you on your team batting 313. So welcome to both of you. Um, for baseball, uh, the first question is going to go to Ty, Ty Moore. Um, how did you feel about last year's season? Um, personally, uh, I didn't start the season great. I had a broken wrist, so I mean, that kind of set me back. Mm -hmm. um, during the season, we had a couple ups and downs uh, with some conference play games, but during the tournaments, uh, we advanced past the first round and took on Waynedale, which is a very strong team. Uh, we lost to a close score, but... Overall, I think we were a good team. Mm -hmm. Well, bringing up that, uh, overall, the baseball team last year was, uh, if I'm correct in my statistics, you were 17-8, and eight, and in the uh, LC8, you were 8-6, and six, which was uh, good enough for uh, tying for third place. Uh, and you were, you did win the sectional finals. You lost, unfortunately, in the district semis, as you talked about. Um, CJ, what could the team have done better? Um, honestly, just practice harder. Um, some, like... We weren't, we, it was our first year playing together, all the young kids with like the sophomores, not mm -hmm. having a freshman year, sure. not being able to play with them to get like a good core together. Mm -hmm. I think that really set us back too. So honestly, just like if we were to like more bond together and stuff, I feel like we could have done a lot better. Does the fact that the, the, that the weather is terrible during the spring, yeah, does that, that impact the practices? Yeah, that, that does. That does make it a lot worse. Practicing the gym, not being enough room and hitting sure. sometimes because softball has to go up there too. Yeah, exactly. Well, uh, we returned five seniors this year, including you. Um, tell us about this year's team. Uh, I think it should be good, and the big thing we're talking about in practice and Coach Dan is our speed on the team. I mean, we have a bunch of kids that can, should be able to steal bases, and, I mean, those can be free bases that can end up helping win a game. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we can use that to our advantage. I think you've had at least two scrimmages, and you've won both of them according to what Game Changer says. Right. So that's got to be... Something yeah. to look good for, look yeah. up for. Um, last year, we did lose our core of leaders at, you know, to graduation. Mm -hmm. um, so who needs to step up this year um, besides the two of you? <laughs> um, honestly, the younger kids coming up to play varsity, they just need to follow what uh, all the other upperclassmen are doing on varsity and just mm -hmm. focusing in what we're doing just so they can stay tuned and know what to do. Mm -hmm. Well, talking about last year's team, and I'm going to have to put my glasses on here to make sure I get everything right. We had several people that were honored. Uh, we had in uh, all Lorraine County, first team was Riley Reyna, Jacob Wiegman, and Cam Brinker. Honorable mention, CJ Poland, Drew Unanks, and Ty Moore. And for all LC8, first team, Riley Reyna, second team, Cam Brinker, Drew Unanks, and Jacob Wiegman. And honorable mention was Wade Bowman. So obviously we had a lot of uh, good people, uh, and except for Cam, really, I, I think almost everybody is back. Mm -hmm. So that, that's got to you know, be a good core. Well, um, Ty, the, the schedule mixes in several non-conference games. I know you play several non-conference at the beginning of the season, but it also mixes in non-conference games into the regular LC8 schedule. Do you feel that helps you or hurts you? Oh, I feel it's beneficial. So our tournament play at the end of the year can be determined on those non-conference games and pool. Sure, so, I mean, yeah, exactly. You beat a really good team you know, later in the year, they're going to look at that, and that can base you on your seed in the tournament. Mm -hmm. So, And also, I mean, it's different type of competition. Uh, it could be a worse team. It could be a better team. So either way, it can help you. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, exactly. Well, um, what do you think? The strong points are on the team this year? What do you think the weak points are, if we even have any? Um, strong points, staff, our pitching staff, our pitch staff, we have, a good, we have a good core. And a lot of them probably low ladies right now. And then we have a couple of like, uh, underclassmen that can pitch too, that can help us out on those like weaker teams and stuff. And then our weak point, weak point is definitely our hitting, honestly. We just need to keep working on it, get them in the cage, and just keep hitting. 
I think a lot has to do with again maybe the lack of practice yeah. and being able to get you know yeah. full good pitching and you know and things like that. Um, you say pitching is one of the big you know one of the big strong points. Riley Rayner was one of the top pitchers in the in the league last year, yeah. and you did a good job. I think, as I remember, you were like two and one. I think, but your ERA I think was a very good three point one six. Yeah. Again. The Guardians would love to have you as a pitcher on their team. So like, from that aspect, I think it's going to be good. Well, we'd like to thank both uh, C.J. Poland and Ty Moore coming in to talk about the baseball season this year. Uh, it's going to be starting. In fact, it's already supposed to have already started, but we've already weathered out the game. I think we're supposed to play today. Um, we hope that that, team get, that game gets in. It's going to be a little chilly, though. Might be a lot of sunshine out there, but it's going to be cold. So that's, for, as, from a pitcher's point of view, it's probably hard to grab a hold of that baseball, is it not? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's a bit cold and getting numb. You still really can't feel like high on the ball. And not only that, but being able to warm up or yeah. being able to swing a bat or anything like that. It's got to be tough. The ball doesn't bounce off the bat as much. So. No. Yeah. And it probably doesn't do so good on your hands either. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Well, again, we'd like to thank both uh, Ty and CJ for coming in and talking about baseball. And we hope to have a very good showing this year, hopefully better than tying for third place. So hopefully everything will go good this year. Good luck to both of you and good luck to the whole team. We'll be back after this message with another episode, excuse me, with another uh, talking with the softball team. Uh, this is Dialogue with the Dukes. The Wellington Music Store has a wide variety of musical instruments to suit anybody's needs. They have guitars like bass, electric, and acoustic. They have unique instruments like banjos, harmonicas, and stuff to even run drum sets. They have violins, they have the tools to set up anything, and they also have band gear. They have strings for the guitars and other instruments in there. The tools just, they keep going and so do the instruments. It's a very amazing place. We are back. We hope for any of your music needs, we hope that you do visit the Wellington Music Store located at 117, 119 West Herrick in downtown Wellington. Now we're going to be talking softball. And as I said at the beginning, we have a double header of sorts, or let's play two. Well, we actually have two people again, two Oswald sisters here to talk about softball this year. We have Lily on my right and we have Miley on my left. Miley, of course, being a senior this year, and you're a, you're a sophomore this I'm year? Sophomore. Yeah, a sophomore this year. So uh, instead of having a sophomore and junior now, or, or excuse me, we have a senior and a junior now, we have a senior and a sophomore uh, to talk about softball this year in the Wellington Lady Dukes. Um, overall, last year, um, I believe, if my statistics are correct, the Lady Dukes were 23 and 5 overall, only lost five games. And uh, in the LC8 in the conference, they were 12 and 2 which unfortunately was only good for second place. Uh, we all know who took first place, don't we? We don't want to talk about them. Unfortunately, at the very end of the year, however, we did have a very disappointing time in districts. We did win the sectionals, that was a good thing, but unfortunately, like the baseball team, we lost in the district semis. So, um, Miley, how would you assess the season? Uh, how did it go? Uh, what were the high points? I think we know at least one of the low points. Um, one of the disappointing low points would be how our season ended last year. Um, some of the highs would be um, Pay and I pitching perfect games back to back. Oh, that was w wonderful. In fact, even though even COVID was still going rampant at that point, we did a bad thing and we actually interviewed you and Peyton uh, for pitching back to back, no hit games. That has got to be something that's never been done in Wellington history. So congratulations to you and of course Peyton. But certainly a high point, there definitely. Any other high points or low points that you can think of? Um, I think we were a strong hitting team last year, so any high points would be when we were having rallies of hits and it was just a great feeling and having all of our team cheer for us and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we had a couple of players that had um, over 500 batting averages. Um, I think you were over 300, I believe. And I looked at yours and I can't remember yours, Lily, but. Uh, but anyway, yeah, we had certainly really, really good hitting, no doubt about that. Well, um, how do you think the team successfully came together last year, and what can we do this year for the team to come together? Because we, and we'll be talking about who, you know, what we lost, but how, do, how did it come together last year, and how can it come together this year? 
we just had two really good pitchers. I think like we just got all our energy from them. Like they were just very successful and helped the team be successful as well. <laughs> well, here's one of the successful pitchers right here, as we've already talked about, Miley. I believe you were seven and one overall. I can't remember what your ERA was, but the fact that you had a seven and one uh, overall pitching for you know throughout the entire season. Of course, Peyton was the main pitcher, yeah. but you certainly filled in as number two. And a fantastic job. And of course, this year you're number one. So that's got to be very exciting for you. Um, we did lose three seniors plus some other players off of last year's team going into this year. But we do have six seniors returning. Um, would you consider this a rebuilding year or just continuing on with you know, what we did last year? I think a little bit of both. We're definitely rebuilding. We have some new players coming in and we have to um, take them under our wing and uh, teach them the ways of Lady Duke softball. But we still have a strong core because we have six, six strong leaders that have played together since we were 10 or 12. Sure. Yeah, exactly. We've already talked about uh, the fact that we uh, have lost a lot of good players from last year, but we do have a good core coming back. Uh, six seniors, I believe. Uh, who are the leaders this year on the team? Are they just the, just the seniors, or are there other leaders involved? Other than the fact we know, to my immediate left, one of the leaders being Miley. So who are the leaders this year? Leaders are mostly Miley and Teddy, and then as well as the other four seniors. Like, they just keep our energy up. They just are so helpful with anyone that's like not as experienced or like just need a little bit of help. Like they're just very helpful and they really bring a lot to the team. Mm -hmm. Well, um, Miley, we do have some tournaments in the middle of the, of, of the season. Uh, I know we're going hot and heavy with the conference, but we're uh, invited to the MVD Invitational and I truthfully don't know what that stands for, but we do have the MVD tournament over one weekend and of course the previous tournament, which we're always involved in. In the middle of the season, how does that actually affect the team? How, do you, how does the team approach these tournaments? I think we approach the tournaments the same way we would any game. It's only a little different because we play teams we don't normally play before, so it's very good to see different competition. Um, but I think that these tournaments prepare us for our um, end of the year tournament games because of the better competition we see at these tournaments. Mm -hmm. Well, um, we do know that we play a lot of scrimmages at the beginning of the year. Um, do you think the scrimmages, I, ho I hope that they help, but what do you actually learn in the scrimmages? We learned a lot like from our pitchers, like we learned what the new freshman Mallory Pickering can do. Mm -hmm. And then we just see like where anyone can play in any position. Like some people get switched around or like some people will get in that normally don't get in just like to see what they're capable of. Mm -hmm. Do you think that uh, there's a lot of fundamentals that are taught or do you feel like because of the experience of everybody, Hopefully the new people know the fundamentals. Is there as much emphasis on fundamentals or is it just a given? You kind of hope that they would know the fundamentals, but scrimmages are like are preseason, so they'll like help like instill those fundamentals into the people before like the actual start of the actual games. Do, do you know how many uh, scrimmages you did uh, accomplish among the weather and all that? I know one of the scrimmages was in 65 degree weather, and today it's 21. <laughs> we were able to play three of our four scrimmages. Okay. Uh -huh. Well, before we end, I want to go through the, uh, the awards from last year's team. And again, got to put the old glasses on here. You two will understand when you get to my age. For the LC8 softball awards, uh, all LC8, Peyton Regal, certainly a big loss. We're going to really miss her. Teddy Hardaby, uh, we do know that she's going to go in for surgery, unfortunately. So we hate to see her, uh, I don't know, she probably won't be able to do anything after the surgery. So, and Brooke Noss was also first team LC8. Second team LC8, we have Miley Oswald. Honorable mention, Kennedy Banco. And for the Lorain County overall softball awards, first team, all Lorain County, Peyton uh, Regal, Teddy Hardaby, Brooke Noss, and Miley Oswald. And second team, all Lorain County, Kennedy Banco, Lily Oswald and Michaela Moore. And then for uh, first team all district, we had Peyton Regal and Teddy Hardaby. Honorable mention, Miley Oswald. And then for all Ohio softball awards, first team all Ohio was Teddy Hardaby. So we uh, certainly had a, a great team last year, but we lost a whole lot of people as we just went through uh, all of those awards that went through. Uh, so we would like to 
hope that the team does even better this year, uh, although 12-2 and two is a tough thing to, do, to beat uh, overall in the LC8. Um, but the fact that we you know, kind of messed up in districts, I think that's one thing that you could actually point to. So again, we'd like to thank Miley Oswald and Lily Oswald, the, as, uh, the whole idea being game of two today in today's, uh, in today's uh, episode. So again, we'd like to thank both Miley and Lily for coming in, and we hope to see you again very soon for another episode of Dialogue with the Duke. <laughs>